The UCLA Henry Samueli School of Engineering and Applied Science is a leader in multidisciplinary research and education. From advanced physics to healthcare to the newest micro devices, our faculty and students are creating new knowledge and they're passing it on to the next generation of engineers. To further this mission, the school is committed to providing state-of-the-art facilities. In October, the school celebrated the opening of Engineering 5, the newest addition to the engineering complex. The building houses the departments of bioengineering and material science and engineering. It's designed to be conducive to interdisciplinary research and education. By working with researchers across the campus and at other institutions, our faculty are at the forefront of advanced technology in realms such as high energy physics. Just before I came here, I had read a paper written by Professor John M. Dawson in the UCLA Physics Department on the use of using lasers for accelerating electrons in a plasma. And that paper made some fantastic predictions that electrons could be accelerated thousands of times faster using lasers and plasmas than using microwaves in a conventional accelerator. So when I came here, I was only 25 years old, and I figured, what the heck, I might as well take a risk and work on this. By 1995, we had accelerated electrons to 100 million volts in less than one millimeter. Just to put that in perspective, using conventional microwave accelerator, it would take about five meters of accelerator to get 100 million volt electrons. We proposed that if you could scale this up to meter scales, one could get energies of interest for doing high energy physics. So in 1997, we proposed a collaboration to do a series of experiments that would show the scalability of this scheme. We first accelerate electrons through the Stanford Linear Accelerator. Then we shoot this dense bunch of electrons through a plasma where it excites a wake or a wave. If you can catch this wave, like surfer catching an ocean wave, it is possible to further accelerate particles by another 40 billion electron volts in less than one meter. Paradigm shifting changes in technology don't come along very often. But what we are talking about here is such a paradigm shifting change. Through extracurricular projects offered in many disciplines, UCLA engineering students learn how to tackle open-ended problems outside the classroom. Legos, just thousands of Legos strewn all over my room, constantly garbage bags full, taking stuff apart always to figure out how it worked. And then it went on to cars. Many Baja has just taught me how to do my job, do my classes, do anything where a you know, technical mind is necessary. I call it mechanical accounting. All the forces need to be correct. Um, everything needs to be working together. You know, there can't be too much heat, there can't be too much friction. Because in the end, all you need to do is just get every little detail correct. So now it's basically we have a good car, let's you know get creative and really start doing some really meticulous engineering. We're amazing at sports. I want to make us amazing at motorsports. Um, I want to be the best sports team um, with a motor out of Southern California. Innovations in the lab are sometimes based on models from the natural world. Professor CJ Kim and his students have developed a micro device that mimics the human hand. In our UCLA laboratory, we have various MEMS projects, anywhere from lab on a chip, with the biomedical application to uh, droplet-based RF devices. Uh, and among the project, we do actually have a, a project called MicroHand. We use silicon, which is hard material, uh, as our bone. We do have uh, polymer-based balloons between each bones to be muscle, which is also flexible. So we are using the gas pressure to uh, expand the balloon between each bone we actually already have a series of applications where we are planning. One is uh, with the local company iOS, it may be used to uh, pick and place small objects. Because of this flexibility the hand has, it can handle many different objects of different uh, uh, shape. 
Inside the classroom, UCLA bioengineering professors Benjamin Wu and James Dunn teach a class that includes visits to the Geffen School of Medicine to see how technology is advancing healthcare. CYBEM stands for System Integration in Biology, Engineering, and Medicine. This is a senior level undergraduate course for our bioengineering students where they have two quarters of lectures that are integrated tightly with clinical visits and laboratories where they learn in depth selected organ systems. We had a lecture from a cardiologist, Dr. Barbara Natterson, whose expertise in the area of cardiology involves the use of ultrasound or echocardiography. And in that particular session, she took the students from some of the basic problems that echocardiography is used for uh, to some of the more cutting edges of the research. We talk about the problems of these different devices and how we would change them if we were to change them. And we base them all back to the fundamental mechanisms of how these things work in nature. Sometimes uh, it appears that uh, some sort of epiphany had happened and they realize that, wow, this is really something cool and that's something that they would like to pursue. There are about 40 groups worldwide in this area. Almost 30 of those can trace their lineage directly or indirectly as students and postdocs of the group at UCLA. My initial interest in MEMS was actually to make a micro-robot. Um, it was a little too early, but it was so interesting as a mechanical engineer. We did make it actually uh, survive. No, it's not Javi anymore. Because we start with great students to begin with and the questions they ask are thoughtful questions that you don't expect from most undergrad students. I think every professor here knows that uh, to really move the field forward, you need to have young minds that have a fresh perspective on problems. The UCLA Henry Samueli School of Engineering and Applied Science, pushing the boundaries of technology and education.